the big advantage to listening to pre-market prep is you find out what's really going on in the markets. Wicked rotation yesterday. <laughs> Buying the small caps, interest rate sensitive stocks. We'll cover that today. Waller interrupts the rally, talking hawkish. He must also listen to pre-market prep. Not much on the earnings front. Mark Chaikin, 815, GDP, 830. Hey, folks, it's the end of the week. Pre-market prep starts right now. Welcome to Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep. This is a volatile puppy here. It's all about execution styles and strategies. Okay, good morning, traders and investors. Welcome to this edition of Pre-Market Prep. We're flat. We're down uh, 50 cents, 53.07 and a quarter. Uh, got hit. Nice rally yesterday. We will talk about that in just a few minutes. The old 315 ramp. Buck back over 104. The future's up 21 cents at 104.28. Bonds down a quarter point, man. They like doing that. Uh, 730 seconds at just under 120. Crude back up. Buck 12, 82.47. Gold moving in on that high from last week. Up 2140 at 2234. Is there a catch up trade in silver? I don't know. That's down uh, just uh, four cents at 2471. Another good day for Bitcoin, up 2290, 71,600. Let's bring on Triple D here. Triple D, if, uh, Ben, if you sat out the whole day yesterday and then you came back at 315, uh, that rally, what a wicked, wicked rally in the no, small caps. No, no. Interest rates, right? Yeah. Um, wicked. Ra- well, at the end of the day, the three o'clock, I don't know what that was all about. That just went crazy there. But, um, you know, we were down most of the day. But what was really moving yesterday was everything that had lagged. It was the laggard trade. They were selling NVIDIA. They were selling Bitcoin. I even lightened up a little bit of Bitcoin. They were selling everything and that had been working really well. And they were moving into everything that hasn't run yet. So they're moving in all the lags, laggards, IWM leading the charge, stocks, bring on AB here um, because he has commentary here too. He was talking, you know, ENPH, the huge move there. So solar was hot. All the stuff that had lagged is what they were buying. We are still folks in rotation station. This market, if it's selling tech, it's buying something else. It's just one stock versus, uh, uh, you know, IWM versus the growth names. That's what was happening yesterday. AB, there you are, buddy. What are you What are you looking at this morning? Well, we. I mean, it seems like it's kind of a slower news day, Joel. But we did have an acquisition from Home Depot. Home Depot announced it is buying a specialty distributor. This was a company that was private, not on the public markets. SRS for eighteen and a quarter billion dollars. Um, and essentially, what Home Depot is trying to do with this acquisition is it's making a move to. Um, uh, to, to get more customers on the professional side. So about half of Home Depot's customers are guys like, you know, us that might go to Home Depot to buy some stuff for a do-it-yourself project. The other half are professional roofers, people that are doing construction and all this stuff. And so they're they're hoping to basically get more project deals through this distributor, 18 and a quarter billion. I mean, Home Depot is about a $400 billion or $400 billion uh, dollar company. So it's not a huge acquisition for the company, uh, but obviously, it, you know, Home Depot thinks this could help it grow in the long term, which I like the move. Again, SRS is a distributor company. And, and one of the biggest problems on construction sites is when the workers run out of something and they got to go to Home Depot or something to pick it up. That cuts out like three hours of their day, right? Like they were in a groove working and now you got to go pick up more materials. So SRS, Home Depot is hoping it can help, you know, ship more materials on their own and uh, and get some more business. Uh, a couple thoughts. One, when you have these private deals, it's very hard for the Arabs to figure out what to do with it. So they're not even touching it. So you're not going to see a lot of arbitrage coming in here and saying, well, they're paying $20 billion, they've overpaid. When they're buying a private company, we don't really know what that valuation was. When you buy a public company, you can say, oh, it was trading for 10 They just paid 20 They paid a $10 billion premium. We don't know what that premium is because private companies aren't valued like they are in the public market. 
So I think it's kind of a nothing burger. So far, so good, though. I mean, they're buying it up, so they're probably seeing, you know, the points that you're making, A.B., that this probably helps business to a certain extent. They're obviously, you know, coming here, buying suppliers. I mean, it sounds on the surface pretty good. I just don't know if $20 billion is an overpay or an underpay. I don't know because I can't value that company. So difficult for a trader uh, to come in and say, this was a great deal or this was, you know, they paid too much. Difficult to do. Well, you can look at the stock reaction and and if if the you know overall market investors were super worried that they overpaid by a bunch, the stock would probably be getting hit a little bit harder this morning. Uh, the CEO Ta uh, Ted Decker of Home Depot said that it could increase Home Depot's total addressable market by fifty billion dollars. Uh, I mean, it's not surprising to to hear him be bullish on this deal right after they did it. But I mean, if you if that ends up being even half true to 25 billion, then they already got their money back. So, uh, you know, again, not a huge deal or not a huge acquisition for Home Depot. Obviously the stock's not moving too much on it, but it could be, you know, something to watch if it does end up if Home Depot is able to get more business from the professional side. Again, uh, makes up about half of its business right now. So if you want to want to be a negative Nelly on it, they're looking for growth. Maybe they see the individual consumer slowing down, so they're going for growth. And uh, I'll just do, that I'll give you a final comment on this, but uh, I would just look for your your three day high. I mean, that's all I can give you three eighty nine eighty six. If you're lo uh, looking to a uh, lighten up. Uh, that was right in the area of a previous day low. But, man, I wonder what those workers are doing. If it takes three hours to go to Home Depot, I wonder if they're stopping, <laughs> and, getting a, stopping and getting a Wendy's or something. But oh, that was the yeah. coffees, well, they're on the clock, they find right? ways. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I only know that because I have uh, one of my buddy's dad who's like in the construction, he's a general contractor, had a startup, like an app that was basically a Uber delivery, but for, for that, so that if your workers needed more concrete, they didn't have to go to the store, they could just hit the app and they would get it delivered so they could keep working while they were waiting on it. I don't know whatever's happened with that app. If it ends up going public or something, we'll, we'll, we'll bring them on and talk about it. Uh, I just I just want to make a general comment here on just pointing out something that you said as well, you know, that maybe, you know, people kind of like this deal because it's trading up. Um, it, it's possible. One thing you're missing is that institutional traders are not at their desk yet. So when you have a news event overnight, 99% of the time it's algorithmic driven, meaning the algos are always awake. So they're coming in and they're hitting. They're doing things. You can value if this was a public deal, the algos would be all over it because they can value it. The algos are out here. The algos are like, we don't know what to do with this. We're not trading it. And the institutional money managers aren't at the desk yet. So I would say this still just isn't even in. It's still in price discovery here. So I wouldn't be surprised if you get a significant move off of this either direction. I'm not going to try to pick a direction here yet because it's up fit, but you know, it's it's up a buck. You know, it's up a buck 21, but straight 8,900 shares. Let's wait, you know, until we get to like 10 o'clock and we start getting institutional money managers and see where they vote with the big dollars because the algos are just out on this. Got it. Yeah. Uh, Dennis, do you think that the algos are adjusting to daylight savings? Uh, I don't know if they have. You know, I have not. So <laughs> maybe, might... maybe I should just go back to being full algorithmic trader and then I wouldn't have to worry about these adjustments here. But and, uh, I like final... point click stuff. I did work construction. I did do I work construction one summer um, in uh, uh, in back in Monroe, Michigan. I helped put in a sewer line. And Ooh, man, dirty construction. I know, oh, man. They they it's worked they worked terrible. my butt off on that. I mean, I finished that project. My dad's like, "Oh, you want another project?" I'm like, "No, I'll go back to being a lifeguard." <laughs> <laughs> Not fun. So, um, okay. Yeah, and, and Joel, that's or, uh, Dennis. Sorry, that's a good point. I um, I, I think instead, I mean, I wasn't saying that the the you know the market loves this deal because obviously the stock's not trading up that much. I think it's more if if it was such a, you know such an overpay my point was i think you'd be uh seeing it trade lower which to your point we could still see that after the market opens i, I i'm i'm kind of with you i think that the market's gonna have trouble even discovering if it was an overpay or not right. because it's a private company and they're gonna like the idea of them you know getting a supplier you know i it, on the surface you know if it, it's gonna say overpay underpay it just seems like good deal all around and if we can't you know figure out if it's an overpay or an underpay if the market can't figure it out it could rally on it. So it's not surprising it's up. I'm kind of with you. Um, all right. Let's move to RH, formerly known as Restoration Hardware, which 
First of all, this is what I don't get this rebrand because I went from Restoration Hardware to RH. What does RH stand for? Restoration Hardware. Uh, um, the company reported earnings after the close yesterday, missed on EPS, missed on uh, sales, and the stock is trading up about 10%. So right after the numbers came in, the stock got hit, and then the CEO on the call uh, gave some kind of bullish guidance based on demand so that um, – Improved results may be coming, but are likely priced in. Uh, said that demand is expected to remain high through 2024 and 2025. So, uh, again, this is your like luxury furniture and home store. I mean, I, part of it is like, okay, if interest rates do slow down the economy, you'd expect companies like this to maybe we've talked about the big ticket items and restoration hardware. RH sells couches for like fifteen thousand dollars. That's oh, a big crazy. ticket item. I would but, never buy anything in an RH. It's so expensive. Joel and I have had this conversation on this show for a decade on this stock, and we don't get, you know, why it just goes up and up and up and up, and obviously maybe not as of late, but for years. Subscriptions. They have a subscription model. Is that what it is? But I yeah. go into that store, and there's nothing. Like I like like when my wife walks in that store, I just you know, oh my gosh, please don't like anything in here because <laughs> it is so expensive. Everything is so expensive in there. But I mean, I guess you know when you're selling a couch, AB for fifteen grand, the markup on that's probably ten thousand dollars. They make a lot of money. They sell one of those couches. Sell one couch a day, and you make a lot of money. Yeah, I think the flip side to the you know when you see the big ticket items slowing down, you know interest rates. I mean, I'm sure some people were borrowing money to buy some of this stuff, but I mean you also have a, a much wealthier customer base to where if there is some sort of an economic slowdown, they can probably still afford this stuff. You know, if you're shopping at Restoration Hardware, you, you know, I mean like interest rates probably aren't going to hurt you too much. Um, so again, Restoration Hardware trading up this morning nine point. Uh, six one percent closed higher, uh, around four percent yesterday. So big move, uh, in in RH over the last two days. Uh, and the or move on the earnings itself was just wicked too. So this stock initially traded on the earnings miss because it missed initially right. traded down almost thirty points. Like you'll see that little candle, like you can't even really see it there, Joel, because it was on the initial candle. But that line there doesn't show red. It's oh, kind of there it is. I was looking for. Oh yeah, it's there. It traded down like 270 <laughs> bucks. And oh I got God. caught on this because I smacked William Sonoma on it. Um, thinking, you know, William Sonoma is going to go down with it, which, you know, probably would have. But the thing, you know, reversed so quickly in my face that I'm like, oh, my gosh, now my William Sonoma is no good. So when you do that, you should head yourself and actually buy some of the RH, which I did not. You know, I just see the earnings miss and I'm like, oh, it could go lower. And then, boom, for whatever reason, you know, a minute later, they just started buying the hell out of it. And. We can say maybe it was something that said on the conference call, but I didn't know the conference was one minute after you know the 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 earnings. I don't think it was. So whip saw trading action in this puppy down thirty, then now going up thirty. Crazy moves. You just uh, broke one of the rules that you yell at me about because William Sonoma's already reported. Yeah, but it's going to go down something. I hit a flat. <laughs> okay. No, it's true, Joel, and it's a great point. Okay. William Sonoma move will be muted. Because it's already reported, but it doesn't mean it doesn't have any move at all. It means it does move like like one third of it and move like one eighth of it. So it's okay. just a more muted response. But if you see RH down 30 and it's going to be down 30, William Sonoma is going to go down. Okay. But that wasn't the case because it went down 30 and then it's immediately <laughs> back up. And then I'm scrambling and somehow I actually got covered and didn't really lose much. But you know, now William Sonoma has actually bit up a couple of bucks here because of RH. Good so. move. Good yeah, no, it, well, it would have been lucky to get covered. But again, you know, it's not going to have a huge move here because it already reported. So that's a good point, too. Uh, one technical comment here that spike, I can't really give you support in this thing with up 28 bucks. Pre market high, uh, 329 even. And you have a little bit of confluence here because I thought I saw a high. Yes, I did. Uh, no, I thought I saw one at 27.50. Uh, but no, I didn't keep an eye. You want to follow through on this one. Got to get to that pre-market high at 329 minor resistance right now for our age. All right. Well, it is 8 16 AM. We got our man, Mark shaking, hanging out backstage. Let's go ahead and bring Mark on. See which stocks he's been watching. What picks he's got for us today. Mark Jacob Analytics joins our show every other Thursday to give us mm. a fundamental 
and technical outlooks on the market. Mark, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, Joel. How are you? We're doing good. We're doing good here. Well, uh, where do you want to start here? Let's just go broad market, and then Triple D usually takes over with you. So give us. Give how, how about market. if we start with uh, RH Corp? Because I you're, that you're was, just I, it. Yeah, give no, us. No, I know you are. I I was I was listening. I actually watched that conference call last night and came in this morning with the notion of buying puts, uh, scaling oh. into April uh, puts with the April fifth expiration. That was the most rambling. That was an hour and 40 minute conference call. Oh, that God. guy was on Painful speed. He was on speed. And I, there's nothing in that conference call that would make you want to buy the stock. Wow. Honest to God, the numbers are bad. This is like uh, levitation or short covering, but there is, an, and, you know, it's a thin stock. The, I, I really would like to buy some puts, but you know that these things can last a day or two. So the strength like this. So I'm going to scale into some puts uh, with an April 5th expert. You had some analysts coming in and, and raising price targets this morning. JP Morgan maintained overweight, raised his price target 345. What are these analysts missing, Mark? I, I, it's not there in the conference call, and it wasn't there in the numbers. So the, I think enough said this is – you know, this guy has a vision for another Ralph Lauren. Basically, he wants to be the – that's the reason for RH Corp. So I take – you don't own it. RHRL, you know, just trying to piggyback on brand awareness. I take it you don't own any of the furniture or couches or anything then? No, I tried to buy one during COVID, and they were on back order. <laughs> you couldn't back get them. <laughs> Back order yeah. too expensive. Everything is I, so much money there. Only a one person can afford a shot there is Mark Jacob. There's a company <laughs> called Our House, uh, which is actually a really well-run company, family-owned, yeah. and that's where I got my couch. But it, um, that's, that's funny. I, I've actually got our couches uh, over ten years ago from Our House as well. It was really good. Those yeah, they do a real ten real years, job. and they're st they're ten years. They're now just moved to my basement, but they've been fabulous couches. Like after yeah. ten years, they're still great. Our house is good stuff. And one other illusion, then we'll get back to Joel's question. Uh, you were talking about the Home Depot acquisition of SRS. Uh, I think top build, BLD, is a great stock in the sort of professional, Ooh. selling to professional space. The rationale that Home Depot gave wow. was they want to be more into professionals. So if you see some sort of pullback in top build, they got you know serious earnings, uh, a growing business and, uh, you know, mid cap stock, which is the sweet spot I want to be in uh, going forward, uh, getting back to Joel's point. But Top Build had a great earnings report. Obviously, you want to see a pullback, but that's another name in a similar space that I really like. It's actually Power trade down obviously. just slightly probably on this deal. So good call there, uh, Mark and BLD. So. So let's move away from the RH. Let's move into, I've got to get your comments on NVIDIA because we haven't had you on the show for a couple of weeks here. And obviously NVIDIA has been running, 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 running. Pulls back the last couple of days. I did lighten up. I'm still in a pretty hefty position in NVIDIA, you know, relative to my portfolio. What are your thoughts here? I mean, are we stalling out here? Or is this just another pullback to buy NVIDIA? Well, I, it's another pullback uh, where we'll see new highs. I'm not buying it up here. We've been in the stock for a long, long, long time. But uh, you're still in too. My wife Are Sandy you... is. Yeah, your wife Sandy is. Yeah, yeah, she's in it at a much lower prices. But again, peeling off as you go up, you've got to peel off stocks like this. Little Otherwise, bit. you get uh, caught up in some sort of avalanche at some point, and then you don't know what to do. But it's the new chip that they announced subsequent to my last uh, visit to the show is just amazing. You know, anywhere between 5 and 30x terms of speed with less uh, power consumption. They're just, they're where you have to be. Uh, the one I'm a little bit cautious about is AMD. AMD to me is was always been sort of a me too, more commodity oriented play. And the power gauge is still bullish, but I think this is the one where you have to be leery. And I would sell AMD on strength, not short it, but 
take profits on strength because it, it just feels like this stock is playing catch up all the time and AMD uh, and Nvidia is just so far out in front. Yeah, it's a good point. Like we've talked about valuation here and it's valuation being higher than that of Nvidia's and right. obviously still being the number two player there. I own both. I've sold over half my AMD though. It's been a really good run too. Reason too, like sometimes when these things like, and they've been really good trades. And like you said, when they're just running, 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 Sometimes you just got to lighten up. I mean, a lot of times what, you know, everybody does, you know, sometimes right is, you know, if it's good companies, reasonable valuations, you don't look and you just hold forever. But, you know, sometimes these, you know, you know, moves that we have in two, three months, I mean, when stocks are doubling in a two to three month period, usually there's some type of check back. <laughs> yep. nothing, nothing goes straight <laughs> we're, up. Forever. We're not, we're not in usual times. We, we haven't had a pullback below the 21 day average in the market since November. This is, Highly unusual, but also very bullish for the next uh, foreseeable future through the end of the year. So, Joel, let's get back to the no, market. Just real quick. One of our listeners was asking if you see any head and shoulder patterns in any of these. And I'm looking. I mean, I see I AMD forming. One, is, it, is, it, is, is it the AMD that they were looking at? I mean, we're not I, I see it like, you know, they're talking the 180 resistance and the breakout. Mm -hmm. and the, okay, you know, yeah. Obviously, 220 going up to 220 and then the key reversal day and we never touched back that now we're consolidating and forming the right shoulder at 180 and that would be a bearish technical pattern yeah. so there there is a valid point there from a technical perspective i can see what they're talking about yeah and, and then mark, when mark starts to get nervous i start to get nervous too because mark's <laughs> been in this business a long time and he makes some fabulous calls oh uh, very kind very kind let's talk about the market okay um well, we've we've had so many momentum signals not just price momentum, but breadth momentum, percentage of stocks above their 50-day average in the S&P 1500, went above 90 in December, January. What does it mean? It means that we're going to be strong into year-end and beyond. And the sweet spot when you have this broadening out, which you saw yesterday, if you saw the equal weighted S&P was up 1.6% which uh, reflected the fact that a lot of these uh, defensive stocks started to move uh, utilities, staples, and, and uh, pharma. And you want to, I think, start looking at quality mid-cap companies because they tend to outperform when everything has got a tailwind, and that's where we are right now. I, th I do think, you know, we just before April earnings season, we may see the market peak, but anybody who's tried to call a short term top here has been uh, has been on the wrong side of the market. Uh, but I do think if we spike up to, say, 5400 by April 8th, let's say um, we could be in for a little bit of a pullback. But every pullback, in my view, is a buying opportunity. Mark, yesterday the Dow had its best day of the year, closing up more than 1.2%, and the IWM also had a great day, closing up 2%. I feel like that's kind of rare to see small caps and the Dow be the two you know, best performing indices on the day. Do you? I mean, what do you make of that? Is that rare to see? Uh, it is. I think uh, it's the fact that tech is sort of lagging, uh, and you've got a broadening out and that broadening out can happen in the small cap space or it can happen in the blue chip space or as was the case the other 493 stocks in the s p 500. yeah i mean do you do you expect the dow i mean to continue i mean the dow has been uh, you know performing really well the past week or so do you expect strength to continue there I, I, you know, you have to look at the individual components. The Dow right. is is never very much on my mind. Not not okay. to be. It's only thirty company. I mean, right? It's yeah. I mean, it's it's a. Somebody told me there. I got to forty thousand. I didn't even know that. Like that's how yeah. much I look at the Dow. I didn't even know it was at forty thousand. I know. You know. Somebody called me and like, wow, Dow forty thousand. I was like, that's news to me because I didn't. I never <laughs> look at the Dow. It's yeah, not on don't. any screen. <laughs> The only way I would see it is if I looked up at CNBC or something. I'd never I never. I hear you. Now. You know, and, and you've got some big names in there yeah, like Microsoft. Boeing and, and Microsoft and Johnson and Johnson. So uh, when pharma goes up uh, and energy's up, the Dow will probably outperform. Uh, another thing I wanted to ask about, Mark, and we've talked to you about some uh, cybersecurity plays the past you know month or yeah. so. 
uh, recent story with United Health, uh, United <laughs> Healthcare got uh, a big cyber attack, had to pay more than three billion dollars. I mean, does do stories like this help propel the cybersecurity names, Fortinet, uh, you know, uh, et cetera, when you see a big company like United uh, UNH getting hit with a, you know, a, a big cyber attack, they have to pay more than three billion dollars. That's got to make some other companies say, hey, we might want to beef up our cybersecurity because if we pay, you know, X company a million dollars a year, that's going to be better than paying three billion down the road if we get hacked. Well, yeah, the, I mean, it's definitely a wake-up call for the cyber stocks. It's not quite that easy, though. You've got to test uh, anybody's uh, software within your system, and it, it it's a tailwind for sure. By the way, they only paid $22 million in Bitcoin, uh, not not in the billions. Oh, I got uh, a headline that said, United Health Group has paid more than $3 billion to providers following cyber the providers well, yeah well providers yeah. are the doctors guys yeah. the doctors weren't getting paid until this week oh, okay right. so so that's after so they had to slow right. down all their all their payments yep. okay so uh, they didn't did... slow they didn't slow it down it they, it just cut off like a noose and the doctors were squawking Got Mark, uh, we got to let you go here in one second. I just want to know when the CEO on speed during the conference call has been added to the check and money flow. Uh, since chat GPT enables me to uh, factor that in. Okay. All right. Mark uh, one, by the way, one stock I do like before we go is C Limited. It's a name I've never talked oh, about yeah. before. Oh, SE. Yeah. yeah. SE. They had a great earnings report. Yeah. Um, I love the mix of e-commerce, uh, the financial products, e-financial products, and gaming. I think this is a, a really solid company with a lot of turnaround potential as Asia and particularly you know, the South China area comes out of a recession. So I think this is a really solid stock and I like right. it down here at 53. We'll keep an eye on it. Mark Chick at Chicken Analytics joining us here at 8.30 a.m. Mark, we'll talk to you in two weeks. Dennis, go wide. I know. Well. Okay. See you, Mark. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Mark. GDP coming up. Not one of our bigger moving numbers here. We'll go to the S and P. Could well, move though because you know we're speculating getting ahead of the, of the numbers tomorrow, which are coming out on a day that obviously you know uh -huh, that, uh -huh. which is okay. ridiculous, but a day that they're not going to be no, nobody able to trade on them. Okay, so, okay. Spent, haven't spent much time above unchanged here. That was our old time closing high yesterday at 08 and a quarter. Had some fluff after hours uh, with the pre-market high or uh, after hours high, 1375. If you want to sell the old time high, get your order out there at 2275. Coming on the downside here, kind of light on the downside. Pre-market low, 01, have nothing for you there. We'll see if they hit this or it's a nothing muffin. Jobless claims, Q4, final GDP. Let's go to Aaron. All right, still waiting on these numbers to come in. Okay, GDP came in at 3.4% versus 3.2% estimated, so slightly hot there by two-tenths of a percent. U.S. initial jobless claims came in at 210,000 versus 212,000 estimates, so a little light there. Continuing jobless claims came in at, uh, let's see, 1.8 million versus 1.7 uh, million uh, one uh, basically unchanged from month over month. Core PCE prices came in at two percent versus two point one percent estimate. So slightly light on the uh, core PCE prices. That's got to be good news. I mean, it's not a huge, not yeah. super cool, but it's at least not hot. I mean, I'll take yeah. that any day of the week. So uh, are we getting a, a pop? oh? Looks like we got a pop, and then coming back did, down a little bit. Did here. they? Did they? The core PC? Did they change their mind on that? I don't know. No, I was so confused looking at this last night, Joel, because we talked about it. We were like, no way they're reporting all this PCE data and stuff tomorrow when they're closed. But from what I could see last night, they reported core PCE today, but then the rest of the numbers tomorrow again on the day the market's closed. I don't really understand it. I mean, you guys have been. Doing this longer than I no, am. I don't, I don't yeah, know. I'm not an economist though, too, and I don't ever see them report. I'm, I'm all the years I've been trading, I haven't seen major numbers getting dropped on a holiday. Yeah, you know, that's what I find very, very weird. But yeah, so then Powell's probably speaking today then at 11:30 if all if all things are equal. Well, I don't think so. Uh, I don't. Know. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't know. I, I think don't. he's still scheduled. I don't know. I mean, we'll. 
I don't know. Whatever. We're all messed up on the scheduling here. Go out to Anyways, lunch. jobless claims, GDP. We are up slightly on this. Not, not nothing. Definitely not nothing. negative news, but not a big move here either. I mean, we're talking about a two point S and P move, so it's kind of been crickets. Yeah. So I um, guess. Well, or go ahead, Joel. I'm just saying that's a good number to me. I don't think we need to like you know, uh, you know, do nine interest rates cuts this year, but whatever. Yeah, Powell is speaking tomorrow. So I guess while we're talking about the economy and economic numbers, we should talk about uh, the Fed Governor Waller's comments last night, basically yes. saying uh, came in, you know, on the hawkish side after pumping Powell came out last week and was, uh, you know, pumping the market. Was that two weeks ago? Now I can't keep track of time. But either way, Powell came out after the uh, it you was know last speaking, Wednesday. Believe last me, last Wednesday when the there. market yeah. the market hit all time highs while Powell was speaking, people, you know, were. Basically said he sounded pretty dovish. And then you got the Fed governor coming in, sounding hawkish. You got the chairman on one end, sounding a little dovish. The the governor on the other end, sounding a little uh, hawkish. Waller basically said, I don't know why we need to cut three times. You know, one could be enough. And so I think that spooked markets a little bit, but clearly not that much because we were basically, I mean, we were trading lower this morning on the futures, but not by that much. So I wonder, is... I mean, is the market really relying on these three cuts right now, or couldn't the market still nice stay afloat if we get one or two? Is 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 getting less than three going to really bring us that much further down? I mean, I don't know. I, I think it's just market rallying on hope here too. Like, so you get, you know, yesterday we get popping up, and now you got Waller comments that brought us down a little bit yesterday, but you got Pump and Powell coming and speaking tomorrow. I mean, we're getting conflicting viewpoints here. Powell was very, very clear. He said the Fed is looking at three cuts. So this Waller news, and Waller does not have as much weight as Powell. Waller's, you know, Waller's a little bit hawkish. You know, he's like, I don't have reason for three. So he's just disagreeing publicly. But does his opinion have as much weight as Powell? Hell no. So Powell clearly, and when he spoke, when was it? A week ago? When did he speak? Last week ago, it was a week ago three. Wednesday. Yeah, it was a week ago yeah. yesterday. So I know three. For sure. A week ago yeah. yesterday, he clearly said three. I'm going to go with the Fed chair over, you know, the, the, the Waller. 100, yeah. 100 yeah. out of 100 times. So I think they are still thinking about three. It's still kind of green light go here for stocks. IWM looks like, to Mark's point too, he just said, you know, we kind of look like we're gearing up to break out on the IWM. We had a pretty good day yesterday. They're buying pullbacks on stocks. I'm trying to position myself. I bought a bank yesterday. I bought another commodity stock you yesterday. Bought a whole I'm bank? Some stuff. What bank did you Canadian, buy? Canadian Bank of Nova Scotia. I re got it. You bought the whole yesterday. bank? Man, you are the whole damn food. thing. I just bought no valuation still attractive. Just rebalancing. When I'm selling something, I you know I lighten up a little bit of Nvidia. I lighten up a little bit of my Bitcoin. I'm like, well, I, I don't want to be out of the market. So I put it right back to work. And I bought a little bit of Bank of Nova Scotia. And I bought a little bit of Alcoa. This was in the morning. Actually, both of those trades worked out well. I picked up Alcoa around 32. Ended up a day at 33. So I'm actually, it was a pretty good move. Um, Bank of Nova Scotia, I bought on the Canadian exchange. But it was down at the lows of the day. So it popped up too. I mean, just rebalancing to a certain nice. extent. My portfolio has moved so much from, you know, like to the growthy stuff. Because I put that stuff in. And then it just exploded in price. That, you know, I'm just doing some rebalancing. You know, it's natural. Like, when you start looking, NVIDIA's 5%, you know, my portfolio. I'm like, well, I don't want it up at 5 I had it at 3 Bring it down a little bit because this is exploding. Like, typically, I come in. When I make a position in my portfolio, it's usually 2 or 3% of my portfolio. But then they double. They go to 5 or 6 You're like, well, you can just keep letting it go. And sometimes they can just take over. Bitcoin, same thing. Brought in at 2 It's over 5 I'm like, okay, well, now it's time to just do a little bit of readjustment. Ideally, I always like 50 or 100 stocks in my long-term portfolio. I don't have that many right now. Crazy. Um, but, you know, it's just doing a little bit of rebalancing. Um, okay. Going, or Go going back to the, uh, you know, Carmen made, said that they're playing good cop, bad cop, talking about Powell and Waller here. It, it, it's kind of like, you know, I mean, it, when you have one parent that's a lot more lenient than the other and you know which one you got, you know, you ask one, oh, can I sleep over at Tommy's house? They say, no, you go ask the other. And they're like, OK, yeah, sure. I mean, Powell seems like the one I'd rather go ask for something right now. He seems a little bit more lenient. Um Let's see. Where do we want to go? That's not and, what you do, Aaron. You tell you tell one that the uh, other said yes. Yeah. Well, and then Mom said okay. Yes, and then you go to the other. Yeah, it's easy. Yeah, it's it's easy to play that. Um, we're leaking here, Dennis. Uh, watch out here. 
Got the pop. I was hoping to see that high from yesterday at 13 and a quarter. We came just shy up at 1250. I think the battleground here is going to be that closing price, that all-time closing price here at uh, 08 and a quarter um, in the S&P. Uh, kind of thought we were going to, you know, zigzag all the way to, you know, the number tomorrow, but now there's no number tomorrow. So we'll see if we stay. Uh, we kind of exceeded the top of the trading range here for the week. So we'll see if we can stay in that upper quadrant. Well, no, I, think I think they're there still are... part of the number tomorrow, like yeah. AB was saying. Like, no, there's still yeah. numbers tomorrow. From what resale I wholesale inventories? No, they're still PCE. It was just they just like they gave the... this PCE core price index, you know. But the major, the main number, I'm just trying to read it here too. I believe it's still tomorrow here. Right. I think they just gave part of the PCE data today. That's why. I yeah, mean, it's it's confusing it's here. Confusing. Like we're Powell, getting the number. The PCE is coming in tomorrow. And Powell is still scheduled reading. to speak. From what I can see, at 11:30 a.m. tomorrow again on a day the markets close. So. Uh, I don't know. Maybe Bitcoin will be the way to play Powell's press conference tomorrow. Oh, yeah, that'll be pumping great. Powell, if he starts talking about, you know, oh, if, yeah. he, if he reiterates the three rate cuts, you might see Bitcoin moving. And you can see extra volatility because people are trading that because the market's closed. Um, someone else in the chat pointed out that, you know, across the world, other markets are open. It's just a holiday here. But I mean, again, this is U.S economic data it's rare to well see it it's good friday so canadian markets are closed as well here so north america i don't know maybe they don't celebrate good friday in other parts of the world i don't know that and not in other parts of the world but good friday is a pretty major holiday right um, i mean if you're a christian it's it's pretty major so which is a a, a large portion of the world um yeah we a do billion pe billion people or more more um, we did have some news on AMC come across uh, my desk oh, while we man. were talking to Mark Chaikin. Uh, AMC oh. doing an offering, uh, a Class A common stock of up to How 200. can they offer more stock? Is there any more stock out there to offer? This stock. Well, I mean. The, the, this stock, this company, I mean, just robbing from, you know, like shareholders on a continuous basis here. All the offerings, you know, the CEO selling all the stock back, you know, in the day when the stock was memeing uh, or aping, I guess they call this one the ape. I feel, you know, bad for everybody. But again, we warned on this multiple times. The all-time high on AMC is $726. It's three bucks. It's 99.5% off all-time highs. They continue to do offerings. All that money they raised, you know, they just burned through all that or what? You just like all when when it was memeing, it all went you know, to going Aaron. Out from from three five to eight to twenty to fifty to seventy. They were doing offerings up there, and Adam Aaron selling everything. They just burn all that cash. They got to do more offerings now, dilution more. This is a Who terrible buys these story, offerings? folks. And Adam Aaron did not do any favors for anyone here. So I know you guys are all the apes were all behind Adam oh, Aaron, saying, yeah, he's kidding. gonna. But but again, and they're gonna hate me for this. But I mean, he's the one who made all the money off of this selling up there. And he also, I mean, outside of the stock, he got a, a, a got like a salary of like twenty million dollars. Adam Aaron got that. rich off of all these. He's given Aaron's a bad name. I denounce his his you know job so the far. Hank Aaron's CEO. all the good Aaron Bree, yeah. all the good Aaron's. Come on, and now he's giving our Aaron's a bad name. Come on, I do. I will say, like, I saw a movie in the theater for the first. He's gonna time. hate us for this too because he listens. He, he <laughs> follows Ben Zinger. Remember, we With we had a negative ball. article, and he was just trashing Ben Zinger, saying we were the worst media place ever. You know, just you know, the apes were all mad at us too at Ben Zinger because we said something negative about Adam Aaron. He's gonna hate me for this now too because I've said negative about him before too. But I just like, come on. You know, like, who got rich off this? Let's call it. Let's just call it who it is. You know, all the apes, you know, got broke off of this. And who made the money? Adam Aaron. Yeah, I hope he heard me say that he's given Aaron. How, how do you name. really feel, Dennis? I mean, really, like, <laughs> I'll don't, say hold, don't hold yourself in. No, I mean, if that's the apes what, are uh, listening. It's the truth. The guy is super rich now because of the apes. And everybody yeah, else have... is sitting with a $3 stock that was $700. Yeah, I, I think know, even I... The, to Abel's point in the chat, I think even the apes have turned on on Aaron now. I mean, when you're when you've when you're losing money, right? Like it's easy to start, you know, not liking someone that's that's making all the money. Um, I, I was gonna say I did see a movie in theaters for the first time since COVID a few months ago, and I was like, oh yeah, this is kind of nice. I forgot how like it's kind of fun to go to the movie theater. So I hope in the long run, like it's still a dying business, dying industry. I hope if it's not AMC. 
I hope we still have movie theaters, you know, 20 years from now, just so you have that option. Maybe it doesn't look exactly how it looks now in terms of how many theaters they have. I mean, you go, you drive by some of these and they've got like 16, 24 theaters and on like a Tuesday, Wednesday night, how many people are really there watching movies? But again, I hope, you know, we still have that option in the future. What movie did you see? Uh, this was back. I mean, this was over the summer. This was back when uh, Oppenheimer and Barbie came out, and I went and saw the, those. Oh, this is a lot. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, Dennis, just real quick. This is a total off tangent, but uh -oh. um, I no, it's not a bad tangent. Okay. Um, I and we mentioned movies, and I wouldn't have thought of it unless you guys mentioned this. So I went up to Ann Arbor yesterday to take my uh, nephews out. Uh, one of them had a birthday. And we're, we're talking about all the classes. I was trying to see if the blow-off classes I took were still there. And Lisa mentioned a movie class. Uh, and they go, no. He goes, but there's an entire class on Star Wars at the University that's of Michigan. That's awesome. I'd take that class. I know. That's what I said. And she goes, I said, I bet you I could teach that own. class. Before, yeah. we, before we move on I to movies. I love Star Wars. Everything we, Star Wars. Star Wars rules. Before we move on from movies, what is what is your guys' favorite stock market or financial movie? Well, you know what? You probably got to go back to like Wall Street or something if you really want to go with the classics. Martin but then Sheehan, I love right? Wolf of Wall Street too. It was a fun movie to watch, Wolf of Wall Street. You know, Leonardo DiCaprio is just phenomenal in that. I mean, it was it was it was good. Like, I, I love Wolf of Wall I Street. Didn't even know he, really I didn't movie. even know he was in that movie. I was too focused on Margot Robbie. <laughs> oh yeah, Margot. That's interesting too. <laughs> oh, Lori, Lori B comes up with Trading Places. Uh, oh, that was a great one. Why do we think of Trading Places? Yeah, that is a classic. That is with a Eddie, great. Who was it? Uh, with Eddie Murphy, uh, Eddie, Dan Eddie Aykroyd, Murphy and uh, Jamie Curtis, Jamie Lee Curtis, Jamie yeah, Lee Curtis, yeah. and then the Dan Aykroyd. Yep, yep. Margie, and yeah. I, I would that's have a to great say, one too. I would call it. I wouldn't call it strictly financial, but like one of my favorite movies of all time, and this is really going to date me, um, The Sting. Yeah, you're dated. I don't even know that movie at all. You got to be kidding me, Aaron. He goes off the board. Joel goes off the board. If Joel's, if Joel, Joel's drafting and Joel's off the board, off the board, Come on. It. Help me nobody's out. heard of this one. Help me out. Help me out. Help me out, chat. Come on, easy, Mike. Come on, where you guys are? Your dad is in trouble on this one. All he right, went completely off the board. He took like the seventh round pick in the it's first round. It's one of the greatest ball. movies of all time. He took a seventh rounder in the first round. Uh-oh, uh -oh. Uh, Dennis, people in the chat were happy we hadn't talked about sports. Now you're talking about the draft. Joel, what do you uh, think about? Now they're take talking it to about, the draft. Now they're talking about J.J. McCarthy going top five overall. I, I, I don't, top, top five? They're talking about him going number, number two. Number one. Oh, Why would no. you not take him number one? Caleb Williams is locked in at what? number one, but they're talking about taking JJ at number two now. I I, I would I would no. I, I don't want to give my thoughts on the draft yet. Okay. We'll talk about it. We'll talk it's Robert coming. Redford. It's if coming. you haven't You're watched, the D. if you haven't watched the Sting, you gotta watch it. Robert Redford in Paul oh well, Robert Newman. Redford's in this. That's good. Robert yep. Redford is an awesome actor. Okay. All right. We're they know. They, they got your the back. The now. chat's backing in you up. There. Let's bring it Paul back. Newman in. Was in it? Okay. I'm going to watch it. I love Paul Newman. Let's Paul go. Newman, oh, Paul, Paul Newman, go. Color of Money. That's the movie right there. We'll go on a complete tangent. Paul Newman, Color of Money. You like playing pool. That's the best, one of the best movies, too. Tom Red Cruise, Paul Max Newman. Got it. The Sting involves horse racing, Dennis. It oh, is that what it was? Yeah, the sting involves horse oh, racing. Right. You said we were saying Wall Street. You took it to horse racing. You said Joel's finance. Street. You said finance. Horse racing is not <laughs> finance. It's <laughs> There's money Joel. changing hands to Joel's. I'll, I'll uh, up, I hope Raz isn't listening to the finance a lot horse racing. Trouble. No. All right, okay. let's bring it back to the markets. We did have Wall Street or uh, Wall Street. Walgreens report earnings this morning. Let me get those numbers uh, for you. Walgreens Boots Alliance. Uh, let's see. Reported it was EP good numbers, put the hammer in anyway. Yeah, EPS came in at <laughs> they hate the stock. EPS came in at 120, beat the 82 cent estimate. Sales came in at 37 billion dollars, beat the 35.86 billion dollars. So oh. the the sales beat by like more than a, a billion dollars. It killed like it. A, it seems like it's enough to bump the stock up, but you're trading down more than uh three point more than three. Uh, 0.3 percent this morning. Said that the stock closed up two and a half percent yesterday. So you're kind of unchanged from yesterday's open. But uh, again, getting hit this morning on what seems like a good report. Yeah, and 
and, and again, the algos get burned on this because they should have realized they can't just look at numbers. You got to look at who's reporting the numbers. So it's beat, beat, but it's Walgreens. <laughs> Don't pay up 50 or 80 cents for Walgreens. Walgreens, most hated stock ever. You know, eventually you think maybe you're going to bounce here. It's got the 4.92% dividend, but I just keep looking at Walgreens and I think Rite Aid and I can't stop it. That's why I'm not buy- investing in it. I can't Narrative. stop thinking about Walgreens. When I go into a Walgreens, it feels like Rite Aid. And we know what happened to Rite Aid. Didn't it go bankrupt twice, Rite Aid? Brought it back and then bankrupt Well, yeah, again. Walgreens was going to buy it. Um, yeah, I, so I, I can't stop thinking about Rite Aid. I look at Walgreens and I just see Rite Aid. And that's why, no thank you. I don't care what the valuation is. I'm out. Okay, let's just take a look. This might be an all-time low in this one, is it? Well, not an all-time low. If you're looking for Multi the lows years. back that Yeah, 1970. Uh, boom, 1969. That was, that was the last year. time it was at this price. Yeah, oh, from the Mets, the <laughs> Mets to the Jets to the man on the moon. Uh, that was November of uh, last year. You hit 1968, 1975. The dip, that little spike down, I don't think it got quite there. Uh, 2020 is a pre-market low. There could be some institutional bids there. So keep an eye on that. Just a real quick tangent. I just wanted to talk about this Merck uh, real quick from yesterday because I almost ended up walking on my hands down the Lodge Freeway to the office. That is, I couldn't almost believe. opened at 133. That opened at 132.87. You got really I close to getting burned. Bl- and then it, it took everybody in at 133, and then mm. they flushed them down the toilet. So I Hold it up, though. It's right back up there again. I know. Kramer, oh, it was. Kramer, Kramer Pump last night. He got the CEO on there, and he says, this stock's going higher. And then it popped another buck there, the Kramer Pump holding it up here. I mean, the stock's been in the gutter for a while. It hasn't really, like, not in the gutter, but it hasn't participated like some of these other healthcare stocks, obviously because of not the obesity trade. But Merck is still a fabulous company at a reasonable valuation. You buy a good companies at a reasonable valuation. You buy Merck 132, are you going to make money 10 years from now? I think so. I don't own it, but I think so. Yeah, I was reading more about the deal yesterday, and and um, one of Merck's biggest drivers right now, some cancer you know, therapy it has, is like scheduled to... Uh, they're going to lose the patent on it or whatever in 2028. So they were saying basically that this deal is going to try to help make up for some of that revenue it's losing down the road. So something to consider there as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, let's bring it back to uh, you were talking about banks earlier, Dennis. Uh, Bank of America got a downgrade this morning. Yeah. Um, let's go ahead and we go ahead and get the details on that. Um, but I mean, you were buying Canadian banks, Dennis. What do you think? You know why the reason I'm focused on the Canadian banks here now is because the Canadian banks, again, it's the mortgages, the mortgages have, you know, um, the Canadian ones are starting to come where it's like they're coming due. you know, at five years max, what they give out. So we're two year and a half, two years into this. The people are coming due all the time. You're talking to people. Oh, my mortgage is coming up. Oh, my mortgage is coming up for renewal. Well, all these people, and I've been with bank of Nova Scotia for a long time. Um, I've got a second property where I'm carrying a mortgage on and it's at 1.62%. I've been talking about this, just 1.64, I think. 1.64%. It's coming due in December. Hey. So what I've been doing is like, well, I don't want to pay. So I am i don't want to pay 6 7% here. And I'm lucky enough that I can pay the majority of it off. So I've just been putting in GICs, which is Guaranteed Investor Certificate, at the same bank, getting 5.7. <laughs> so I'm literally arbitraging the bank for four points. So, um, you know, when it comes to December, I'm just going to take that GIC. I've already talked to my banker and pay off, you know, the majority of that mortgage. Um, so I don't have to pay. But I mean, you know, the, when, is, when it rates were 1.64, I didn't need the mortgage then anyways. But the, for the, the you know, the, money, the bankers yeah. there are saying, you can't make 1.64% on your money. He's like, why would you why would you want to pay cash for this? It's 1.64 of the rates. I'm like, you make a good point. So I did the mortgage on the thing. And now when the rates are going to go back up, I'm like, OK, well, now I'll flip out. But, you know, more, most of the people aren't going to have that luxury to turn around. So they're going to be paying 5 6 7%. So the banks eventually be making more money now that they're, the rates are coming. So I kind of like the Canadian banks for that reason. U.S. banks in a completely different situation. Sure, they are. Yep. Because there are yep. 30-year mortgages out there, you know, so the people aren't coming due anytime soon. You know, maybe the odd one, but not like in Canada. So I kind of like the Canadian banks. Dennis, when you walk up to that bank where you have that situation, and let's say it's like noon on a Tuesday, and like you're walking up, all of a sudden do they put like a sign like close for lunch? 
And they like they don't even want they don't want like, want you coming in the bank. They don't here. want my business. Well, from out Joel, of me. I I got a, a story yesterday or two days ago on Tuesday. I had to go to the Bank of America here in downtown Detroit. Uh, gorgeous building, the Guardian Building, one yeah, well, of the most okay. gorgeous well, buildings well, in all of the world. Well, hold on. For first of all, it was my first time in the building ever. Second gorgeous. of all, I did, so I, the reason I had to go to the bank was I had to get a cashier's check for to pay for like you know the security deposit and first month's rent of my new apartment which seemed so antiquated to me i'm like why can't i just type in my debit card number right it's the same amount of money you're pulling it straight from my bank account anyway i had to go get a cashier's check walk into the guardian building it's dark in there and i'm like oh this is kind of spooky like it's an old building like you said it's beautiful but it was completely dark and i was like this is weird power was out in the whole building and the bank so the bank was closed and then the, I go back to the apartment, and I think they thought I was like, you know, didn't have enough money for the apartment. They're like, what do you mean you don't have your, your check yet? And then so I had to go back again yesterday. The lights were on so I could see the architecture and the, you know, paintings Gorgeous. in there and stuff. So it, it was a very nice building, the Bank of America. And the guy was like, were you, did you try to come in here yesterday? I was like, yeah. He's like, yeah, I recognized you. And uh, so, yeah, that was my, like, the one time a year I actually had to walk into a bank. Power's out. I mean, just my luck. Um Let's see. I mean, uh, the bank's having some money trouble. They can't turn. On the I bank. don't know what to say about this Bank of America. Um, yeah, I know. It's a bad right. tangent. Yeah, bad tangent. They've yeah. run a long way. You know what? Lower rates are great for banks. So if the rates are going lower, it's going to be good for the banks all around. So the U.S. banks, Canadian banks, you know, whatever banks, rates going down are good for banks because, you know, obviously the lending long and borrowing short. So, you know, that's, you know, that it's, it's good for banks. You should buy JP Morgan, Dennis. Yeah, you're funny, Joel. At thirty dollars, <laughs> could have been my long term portfolio at one hundred ninety nine dollars. It could be retired right now, but Joel said, "Now you're going to get twenty eight. <laughs> and I don't. I never forgave you for that. Never. Forgave. I wasn't. No I forgave. wasn't around for this. I never heard that story. Like ten yeah, years I, ago, at the beginning oh. of the show, and we we're like, "I'm like, I love this J.P. Morgan. It's a great <laughs> company. I really love Jamie Dimon. Obviously, you know, we know J.P. Morgan. I was like, I've been wanted this in the portfolio for a long time. It was at thirty bucks. I'm like, I'm going to buy some of this for my long term portfolio at thirty dollars. Joel's like. This level, Joel, or Dennis, is 28 bucks. It's coming there. You're going to get it at 28. So I lowered my bid to 28. I never got executed. And the rest is history. The stock's $199. So I tried to save two bucks, trying to get my entry point in my long-term position, and I missed out. Oh, Joel, you're, you're a fault, Joel. You can cancel that order, Dennis. I, you know, right. GTC, I had it out Actually, there. Actually, the I, low yeah. of the move was 28 I was hoping for a flash crash or something. So It, it was 28.53 was the low of the move. If you if you, if you if you if you have an order that's good till canceled, will it really sit in your brain your brokerage? Six for... months, I think. Usually, oh, okay, so six usually six months. Uh, it depends on your broker, but I think they're usually six months. Because good to good till canceled, that should mean good till Forever. canceled. Whether that be ten Forever years and ever and ever. TTC. You, you get filled, you know, in two hundred years, and your you know goes into your your, 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 your aunt, yeah your descendants, <laughs> and you have to go and pay the bill. You got a whole bunch of orders out here. You got caught you're done um, let, let, let's talk um let's talk uh spinoffs yeah ge and uh and triple m here uh joel you might have to give me the details on this i didn't i didn't review this one before the show so general electric is spinning off this weekend so i believe it's you have to own it tonight i believe it's monday correct me if i'm wrong here chat but G they are spinning off ge vernova their global leader coming right from the website a global leader driving electrification and decarbonization um, business there. So GE is spinning that off. That, I believe you have to own it at the close tonight to get, I think it starts trading on Monday. Again, you know, if I'm wrong here, chat, let me know. Um, you can just see the run-up in GE. It's been running into this spinoff. We know we like to trade events. So being long into this event has paid the bills here too. Been going straight up. You wonder if it doesn't have to, or it's been off, doesn't, you know, lighten up. And again, you know, it's spinning off. So there'll be some adjustments and stuff. But uh, they, yeah, they spun off GE Healthcare a while ago. That was the old one. But this is GE Vernova. I don't got it. Is it ticker symbol GEV? I think. G is it GEV e chat? H yeah, GEV. Oh, okay. It's going to start trading April the 2nd. So if we're doing looking at our calendar here, bringing it up, that would make it. Yeah. Am I correct? That's Monday, April 2nd. Uh, My calendar's not opening. Monday's we'll never, April 2nd. We'll never know the true value of GE. No, Monday's April 1st. It says it's going to start trading April 2nd, so maybe I'm wrong on the date here. Man, the, all the spinoffs and the reverse split, this is one of the only 
not you know there are a few, but your reverse split uh, uh, companies that that survived and prospered. Um, so this is kind of, now I I don't even know what to say about this stock. Did the reverse split? Did you have those other stocks? So once the top component in the S and P five hundred a long long time ago uh, on the road that was to recovery. Long, I think. That was a long time ago. So. Okay, eight fifty. So yeah, so GEV uh, April the second. I'm correcting myself. So I believe you'll have to own it on Monday then, because if it's going to start trading on the second, um, 3M also spinning something off. Yep. 3M. So so you Ventum, got this one? it will trade on the New York Stock Exchange under the ticker SOLV on April first. So maybe I that, reversed them. You reversed. So it's 3M them. that you got to own tonight, and it's GE you got to own on the Monday. So yeah, so you're getting two spinoffs from two major corporations. Yeah, so this is like a medical device play. Uh, again, that 3M is spinning off. It's going to start trading on April 1st. I don't really know too much about this Solventum company. The, the name comes from, they're saying, uh, uh, salute, solving and momentum mushed together is Solventum. Um, but again, <laughs> okay, it sounds good. But yeah, it sounds good to me. Medical sounds device right. company. If you're bullish that space, I mean, this could be a play for you. But again, yeah. I don't know too much about this company that 3M is spinning off, so I don't want to, you know, talk about it. But uh, you know, I mean, 3M, we 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 did talk about the stock recently. Still dealing with some of those, you know, overhead legal issues. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, the stock has just been such a dog the past five years really it, it's, it. it's the earplugs i mean we don't know they still haven't figured out liability, the liability there yep. some people said if they had to pay everything that they're going to pay the company's bankrupt i mean this is what is whole holding it back so until we get further clarity which has been the cloud over the stock for years to your point aaron for years you 2017 know, still... the stock topped out i mean we, we were making yeah. uh, you know highs those you know from 2017 all, all the way until you know the covid crash and 3m has never I mean, yeah. they're, they, they're, they're, there's like a dividend on there and I always look at it and I'm like, oh, you know, 3% dividend. That sounds nice. And then I look at the chart and I'm like, oh, that doesn't look nice. So uh, you it, know, it, I mean, it's hard to go and invest when you don't have the dollar figure on this. And we don't know what the long term dollar figure still is on this. I don't know if they're ever going to know, but the PE on it is 10. The dividend is 5.79%. If they didn't have the earplug issue, this is a screaming buy. If they didn't have the earplug issue, but we don't know. Like they're gonna have billions and billions of dollars they're gonna have to pay out. Well, that's gotta come from somewhere. So um, insurance ain't gonna cover it all. So I mean that's why the stock is depressed. It's the same reason, you know, the Taiwan semiconductor. We have the you know the wild card, we don't know if China's gonna invade. So in here we don't know if the ear earplugs lawsuits are gonna bankrupt the company. So that's the wild card here. But if you think you know it's gonna get by this okay, it, the valuation on 3M has been attractive for a very long time. You know what else uh, stock, other stock has been a, a, or sorry, Joel, you want to come in and give some levels real quick? Uh, for uh, for the triple M, uh, that's just kind of in the mid, nah, down to one. I'll pass on this one. It had to gap up and it held, so it's retracing. Don't don't have any good levels for you in triple M. You know what other stock has been an absolute dog, which I actually used to like this stock, and then I, I, I learned quickly I was wrong on it and got out, is SMG, Scott's Miracle Grow. Oh, There's Dennis, you still in that one? No, I've been out of SMG for a while, but this has been the dog of all dogs. It was the pot play for a long time, like yeah, going huh? back. And I think it actually is perking up here because they yes. still got it as the pot play. You know, even though their Scott's Miracle Grow goes on everything, but it does go on pot plants too. So they've got her as the pot play. I mean, it's perked up here in the last, you know, couple of weeks because these pot stocks have just been exploding. I mean, you see the move in CGC over the course of the last two weeks. Three dollars to nine dollars. Canadian ones, especially. We had some Seymour on yesterday talking about this. Tilray, ACB. I mean, these stocks, you know, really starting to kick start it. Some of the US ones starting to go GRWG two to three. So I think SMG is getting a little bit of love from that. It does look like it wants to continue to go higher here. Oh, too. look at Va yeah. Valuation yeah. has always been attractive in this stock. Like if we just go to a trusty Benzinga Pro and bring up the details, you know, you're talking about 3.59% dividend, which isn't nothing. P is 24, so it's not super cheap. I thought it was cheaper than that. Maybe the earnings came down a bit. There's a reason I brought up Scott's Miracle Grow today. I don't know okay. if you guys could think of it. I'll, I'll, I'll leave that in the chat for a second to see if they can figure it out either. It is 901, though, so I won't wait too long. Uh, okay, I just want to – I got a, a multiple star level here for you guys. Look at this. Look at all those stars there. If you're looking to play this SMG, I never would have looked at this chart. 
Uh, I'm not going to worry about the 73.99 seller because uh, someone came off the point and they've been selling it uh, 73.50. But somehow, some way, if this can get above 73.50, looks pretty wide open on the monthlies. Maybe your next target would be 78 and a quarter. Okay. What's no, your the, secret? What's the your reason secret? I you... brought up Scott's Miracle Grow today? It's one of my favorite days of the year. MLB opening day. Scott's Miracle Grow, the official grass provider of Major League Baseball. Oh, there you go. I don't know if we're going to get an MLB opening day trade on SMG today, but again, uh, I mean, you know, I, if you guys have a baseball team out there you're a fan of, I'm a St. Louis Cardinals fan. Uh, good luck to your teams today. How do the Tigers look? Uh, decent. Ooh, they, they they're going to be better. It's been like I'm the bandwagon Tiger fan here, so I'm like when they're just, you know, losing 100 games, I'm not even looking at any of it, but are they, are they going to be better? They, they Are we going to be very good? We get 500? They got a couple. 500? Good, oh, they got a chance. No, they got, they a, got a chance. Young, young guys, Riley Green, uh, Parker Meadows was a rookie who who played really well in spring training. I believe the uh, I believe the Tigers play the White Sox today. So, yeah, I mean, it'll be Spencer Tolkelson at first base. They got some young guys in the outfield. They picked up some free agents. Very strong young pitching staff uh, yeah. that's supposed to lead them. Well, and good. But I'll tell you, man, and I, I think I mentioned this on the show, and it's one of my most embarrassing sports moments of my entire life. Oh, God, I was what? flying back from Florida oh, yeah. uh, a couple months ago. And this guy sitting next to me, he didn't have any tiger gear on. And I'm like looking at him. I'm like, I'm like, I know this guy. I know this guy. I'm looking at the side. And people came on who took selfies with him. And I'm just, and he's not looking at anything sports. And I'm like, I asked Lisa, Lisa's like, I don't know. Right next to me, right in the seat next to me. And I, and the whole way home, I'm thinking, I'm thinking like, who was that guy? Who was that guy? And then it hit me. It was the manager of the Tigers, AJ Hinch. Oh, really? He's probably so glad I didn't recognize him because I would have talked his ear off. But uh, yeah, I sat next to the. I would have like you know, I I would have I would have got the inside scoop, but we're not. All right, it'd be cool if it was Sparky. Remember back in the day, Sparky Anderson. George was Sparky Anderson. Oil yeah, Sparky. You couldn't beat Sparky. The 1984 uh, Tigers. That was my senior year of college. Okay. And we did not, I did not go to class until like any of like, you know, during the playoffs of the World Series. And I had all these things do. And I went to one of my teachers and I said, you know what? The Tigers have been in the World Series. We just I can't do any of my homework because yeah. the Tigers are in the World Series. Honesty is the best policy. And, and the, the teacher gave me an extension on it. <laughs> <laughs> like this, this may never come back around here again and it never has so you got to enjoy 1984 was a great year tigers won the world series and the oilers won the stanley cup both my teams won the problem was i was only eight years old at the time so i really <laughs> didn't appreciate it well we'll, we'll be back there soon hopefully all right guys 904 a.m again there will be no show tomorrow as the market is closed for good friday if you celebrate Holiday, have a great holiday weekend. We will be back on Monday. Joel, who do we got coming on? Uh, we're going to talk. We're going to have a fundamental show. We're going to talk with Tracy Reiniak from Zach's. She's just, you know, enough of our stupid sports stories and movie talk. We're going to get down to fundamentals with Tracy Reiniak. Looking forward to it. Beautiful, Sounds guys. Good. Well, Dennis, any final thoughts? Uh, I think you're going to see more chop here. I mean, we're just in rotation. Remember the title of the show, Rotation Station? That is going to continue. NVIDIA's strength is Apple's weakness. I mean, I'm still trading that. That was working like a charm yesterday here. I mean, NVIDIA was going straight down, and then Apple just started going straight up. I mean, it's again, you know, similar story here this morning in the pre-market. They've identified it. NVIDIA's down four bucks. Oh, no, Apple's, you know, well, actually, Apple is trading down. So sorry, I was wrong on that. Apple's down. So there's an arbitrage. So I'd be buying the dip on Apple. If NVIDIA's going to stay down, I'm buying the dip on Apple right now, not long-term. Just short-term trading talking here. All right, guys. Well, have a great day. Stay in the green. We'll see you guys on Monday.